This is the Range Rover Vela P250. It's got a 2-litre turbocharged Ingenium engine with 250 horsepower, 365 newton meters of torque, an 8-speed automatic gearbox, all-wheel drive, and a whole lot of off-road magic under its hat. But first, let me jump straight into it and say that, in my opinion, this is one of the best-looking SUVs in recent history. And it's not just me being delusional. Take it from the World Car Awards, the single most prestigious awards in the car industry, where this one walked home with the 2018 World Car Design of the Year. I think that says a lot. Every time I step out of the house and I have this view greeting me, I just get this silly grin on my face and a warm fuzzy feeling inside. Mm. Despite all the details up front here, I really like how flush the front end still manages to look. It's almost like a helmet visor. And when you're looking at this from your rear view mirror, it's so menacing. So in terms of making a first and lasting impression, the Vela just blows its competition away. What I don't understand though are these bronze details on the front bonnet and in the front bumper. They look like dashes of curry stains on your face. Wait, this is Indian, right? Compared to the Macan or the Vela's cousin, the F-Pace, which do you think you would stare at for longer? And that's what you want, right? After spending 600,000 ringgit on a car, for people to look. It's like carrying an expensive handbag or wearing an expensive pair of shoes. Sitting between the Evoque and the much larger, more serious Range Rovers, the Vela's design does strike a balance between maturity and youthfulness. Take the DRLs for example, they're a lot slimmer, sleeker, and same goes to the entire side profile that ends with a really profound swoop at the back. It almost looks like a speedboat. I particularly like this character line, a signature of Land Rover vehicles that stretches across the entire side of the car, drawing your attention to the LED clusters at the back. One of the best looking in the industry? I think so. As for the back, hiding the wipers underneath the spoiler is quite a nice touch and for an even cleaner look, they've even tucked the exhaust underneath the bumper. But here's the thing though, and I don't think you can unsee it after this, don't you think this entire back end looks like this? Land Rover says that this is a new type of Range Rover for a new type of customer. And the whole approach in trying to appear more dynamic and youthful seems to be reflecting well on sales as well. Locally at least, I was told that more and more people, some as young as their early 30s, are buying the Velar. I think it speaks volumes. One of the biggest wow factors of the Vela's exterior, well, aside from how beautiful it looks obviously, are these flush door handles. No matter how many times I've locked and unlocked the car, it still amuses me every time these things pop up. And together with these deployable side steps, it's almost like treatment for royalty. If anything, the only thing missing is red carpet rolling out and some people bowing to you as you climb up the car. Once inside, the first thing you notice is not the diamond quilted leather upholstery, but the stains on it. And this is why you should never opt for white upholstery unless you can afford to clean or maintain it once every few months. The other thing you also notice is how clean the instrument panel and the center console is, except for these three knobs to control the radio volume and the air conditioning. You have a screen up here for your multimedia displays to access your auto parking features, to check out different camera angles, ambient lighting, the very impressive Meridian sound system, and Apple CarPlay only, although I've been told that Android Auto is on the way. And because this is a Range Rover, you get to see all sorts of geeky stuff happening underneath the car with the differential and when you're going through different surfaces, different angles. It also allows you to access other off-road driving aids such as low traction launch and different camera angles for you to get through obstacles which in the urban sense means curbs and narrow roads. But here's the thing though, and I mean it for both these touchscreen displays. Fantastic sound system, very crisp displays, but for a car this price, it just feels a bit too laggy. Like everything just reacts half a second after you've pressed it. It's like using a old smartphone that's running on a current OS. 
Down here on this secondary display is where you control the air conditioning and the different types of off-road modes. And I think it's really cool because it allows you to have sort of like a split screen function. Say when you're having navigation displayed on this display, you can still control the air conditioning and the radio on the display below. The seats, if you ask me, really supportive, especially on the rib section. It almost feels like a bucket seat. But then again, I think they've neglected the cushioning in the back here a bit. It just feels a bit too firm. It doesn't come with lumbar support settings. Instead, Land Rover told me that it's part of a special package where it offers ventilated seats, even more versatile seat settings and other features. For a 600,000 ringgit luxury SUV, shouldn't it be the very basic provision? Having driven the car for the last few days, there are a couple of things that I liked and a couple of things that sort of got to me. Like this display for example, I like the fact that you can adjust the gradient of the display in case you know glare comes in and you can't see. Having that adjustability does help a lot. But here's the thing, you see this Land Rover switch right here to access the cup holder? When you need to retract it, the movement is just not fluid. You can feel all the gears working and all that. And this armrest as well, there's so much resistance to it. it shouldn't be like that. If there's one thing I'll probably never get bored of in this car though, is the gear lever that pops up every time you start the car. Very unconventional, but if you ask me, it's actually a lot easier to get used to compared to having a gear lever by the steering column like in the Mercedes's. But the biggest party trick if you ask me is this panoramic roof up here. But I think we have to talk about that from the back. The view of the world from inside a 600,000 ringgit luxury SUV is just much nicer. I think parents with money but who are afraid to talk about the birds and the bees with their children in their formative years should consider one of these. Let them take it out on a drive, on a date obviously, with the seats reclined, panoramic roof open, under the moonlight or maybe even street lights, music playing from the Meridian sound system everything will just fall into place. Just don't get caught though. Big trouble. On a more serious note, in terms of space, I'd say even the BMW X3, which costs half as much, feels a lot roomier back here. While it may appear almost similar in size compared to the Cayenne, its direct competitor is actually the Macan and in comparison, I'd say it does feel a tad roomier back here in terms of leg room, knee room, and even head room. That being said though, having rear aircon vent controls and perhaps one or maybe even two USB ports would have been very convenient. Despite all the cool and slick features, the Vela once again proves that no car is perfect, no matter the price. But can it claim back some points on the move? Yes, the Vela shares more or less the same weight, power, torque as the Macan, even the BMW X3 and the Mercedes GLC. Between the Macan and the Vela, 0 to 100 is about in the high 6 second mark. And if you ask me, those figures, especially in a Range Rover, doesn't really matter. You don't buy the Vela for that. If you want precision, sports car-like handling, you'd get the Macan. But that's not what a Range Rover is about. It's about ruggedness graciousness, presence, and in that sense, I think the Vela just nails every aspect of it. The Vela is like Jason Momoa, or Aquaman as most of y'all know. Big, macho, rugged, scruffy, but in a tailor-made suit, his hair tied up and fully shaven. Whereas the Macan on the other hand is like Bruce Lee, a little bit smaller, but lean, nimble, and full of competence. Hoot, ha, hoot. But it's not to say the Velar is all style and no substance. It holds its own pretty well. What I found particularly interesting about the Velar is how it rides. It's got that signature Range Rover floppiness, but it isn't unsettling either. When you're braking hard, you get this slight nose dive, and when it comes to a complete stop, you get this sort of nodding movement that's actually quite comical. It feels like you're lying on a waterbed every time you go through a speed bump or any sort of undulation on the road. Yet, for all that floppiness, every time you go round the bend, you feel all four corners clinging onto the road, 
like a six-month-old infant would to his or her mom's uh, pointy bits. The steering feels very fluid and power delivery is rather smooth although the transmission can be quite confused when you're driving it really hard. But for the most part, it's actually not that big a deal. It's actually quite refined. You're not supposed to drive a Range Rover like an erratic 18-year-old. It's supposed to promote a very relaxed way of driving, which it does. So being in this may make you feel like you're gliding on clouds. But I did notice, because of the car's beautiful proportions, visibility isn't exactly the best. So what's it like when you have to slither through KL's back roads to avoid traffic because you have an important business meeting to go to, which you would, because you own a Range Rover. Okay, so I'm in Imbi at the moment and I'm going to try to find a parking spot and let the car park automatically. Turn on the parking. Space found. Drive forward. Okay. Right, stop and release steering wheel. Select to R. Okay, it's a relatively tight spot. This car being as big as it is, let's see how well the computers fare. Right, really close. It's asking me to put to D now. Now only controlling the pedals. I have one leg on the brake pedal. Steering wise, I'm letting the car do everything on its own. Sweet! Drive forward with care. Park assist finish. There we go. Done. Not bad. Alright, still in Imbi and uh, on my way out of town now and I figured just to show you how maneuverable the car is uh, with the aids given, all the cameras and all that having these cameras do help a whole lot man you know, especially with visibility out of the car being quite minimal you know, you sit quite high up the panels are all really big and thick having these cameras man really helps me watch the curbs really like tight 90 degree turn here Oh my god, and it has to be an Alpha lah blocking half the road. Well, it's partially my fault as well for driving such a big car on such a narrow road. Oh my god, I'm not sure if you can see the camera angle. I'm so close to the edge. It's a good thing I still don't have to fold my side mirrors, but I think this is uh, for the urban Range Rover user. This is probably as adventurous as it gets, man, you know. Goodness. I pity the driver lah, you know, you're probably going to be seated at the back there. Poor driver is going to be sweating brakes, man. Right, having amused and partially annoyed the people of Imbi for your sake, I begin to wonder, what's the appeal of the Range Rover? In more ways than one, the Vela does fall a little short compared to its German counterparts. But personally, I think this one has that bit of character that's just more charismatic. Don't get me wrong, the Germans do make good cars, but sometimes I feel like it's too competent and as a result, too sterile. With the Velar, you expect it to be a certain way. Quiet, comfortable, articulate, eloquent, gracious, and all those beautiful words. And in that sense, it simply nails it. There's an air of superiority as well from this high sitting position. I also feel quite secure, like there's a lot separating me from what's happening outside these walls. I can see why so many celebrities, even royalties, all these so-called VIPs, wait, that rhymes. But anyways, I can see why so many of them opt for the Range Rovers, whether it's the Velar or the Range Rover Sport. It does make you feel quite special. We have ourselves a little off-road trail here. I think this is the one that they built for four-wheel drive demonstrations, you know, for road shows and all that. Shall we?
So I've got another extra Vela with me on this drive, just in case I get into unexpected trouble, which I always do. Hashtag story of my life. At least there'll be another Range Rover to pull me out. Oh man, it's all just sky. You can't see ahead. This is... No matter how many times I do this, man, I can never get used to this view. Right, I'm supposed to just lift off now. All I'm seeing is the ground, man. That's mad! Leg off the pedal! Oh, God! Just managed to keep it in. My piss I'm talking about, yeah. What happened was um, essentially with the whole uh, mud and ruts program kicked in. So the computer controls, engine output, your throttle, the transmission, traction control. I think perhaps even ABS to just sort of modulate the car's movement so that you get a smooth descent. Right, so we're approaching somewhat of a really steep angle. This is a very compromising position. Okay. So despite the car's rather long overhangs, man, the, the approach angle, the departure angle, you know, simply allows for you to descend a slope that is quite steep and slanted, I suppose, without sort of affecting your front bumper, rear bumper. It's such a strange feeling, man. I mean, from the inside, from where I'm sitting in the cockpit, it feels like I'm operating the car from like the comforts of my home, from a lounge. But when you look outside, man, the terrain is just not where this car is supposed to be, man. It's, it's such a weird combination. Whoa, that looks like quite a puddle. I did not expect this. Now, this car, I was told, is able to wait through depths of I think between 600 mm to about 650 mm a bit higher if you opt for the 3 liter model with the air suspension so you can jack it up partially submerged now got my front wheels dipped in I think I'm just gonna go for it Not only does it look and it's shaped like a boat, it is a boat, man. How it's able to do up to 600 to 650 mm. Bear in mind, pickups do up to about 700, so this is really not that bad. They've done a few things, especially to the engine bay. There are apparently more sealants around the essential components. The air intake, I was told, is positioned a lot higher so that obviously it doesn't take in water and uh, essentially drown the engine. We've come to somewhat of an uneven slope with dips here and there. So one or more wheels may not have traction. I'm still in the mud and ruts program. Just slowly feeding in the power. Thing about it is to keep your foot on the throttle. Let the electronics know what you're trying to do. Essentially getting out of this position where you're stuck yeah, I mean, lifting off the throttle or hesitating with your throttle would really confuse the computer so the car wouldn't know what to do. Best to just slowly and gently, very graciously, feed the throttle and there. I'm on this terrain now where it seems like there are sort of massive potholes left and right, left and right. So just gonna go right ahead, man. Alright, it looks like landmine, man. Like holes on the ground. Left, right, left, right. Yeah. I hate to be the suspension through that course just now, man. The kind of strain it went through must have been mad. There's this ramp here. I 
something maybe 30 degrees a good test of the car's ground clearance man let's see right, uh, not sure if you can see how tilted the car is but god damn Yeah, like the hill descent control, this is not something you can ever get used to, man. But you know, I guess that kind of shows that if you ever need to park your car on the ramp, you can do that with your Velar. So, as for the customary question, is this the car for you? I don't know, you gotta ask yourself if you're spending that kind of money, do you want something that not only drives well but your friends would gawk over. When you get down to the car, people will look at you. When you step out of the house even, looking at the car, you just feel good inside. Then definitely a yes. But if you're the more reserved kind, you don't want so much attention drawn to yourself, then perhaps not. Because this ultimately is a fashion statement on wheels. For more information on the Range Rover Vela, do log on to autobuzz.my. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon for the latest notifications on our newest videos.